Good afternoon, everyone. Today is an interesting topic actually we're going to discuss, and it's uh, relevant to what I have actually posted as some time back in terms of uh, general journals and general batches and general templates. So today we're going to be talking about actually two interrelated topics, which are source codes and the audit trail. So two things that actually will help your client keep up with uh, all the transactions that are occurring within a general journal and uh, they can look at which user has been modifying or has modified uh, a value perhaps at a customer level, any bank account modifications or even at a vendor level. So all these things will be covered today in a very short video. It's not something difficult to actually configure but to give you a step into what you need to start thinking about when your client actually asks you about audit trails and how you set up your payment journals or journals in general, uh, the things that you need to worry about in the long term, uh, which is usually the reporting. So reporting is what your client ultimately wants out of everything that you set up because they want to know if they uh, have a sustainable uh, company that they're running and what things they can use to actually keep it sustainable so reporting does come in handy so that also fits into what we're going to be discussing today so going back to source code uh, so i will show you actually where source code fits in so if you search general journal templates and uh, these are the general journal templates that i have in coronas canada and uh, if you don't know how to actually set up general journal template or the batches or what they exactly are uh, then make sure you refer to one of my older videos in which I've actually explained you in detail a little bit of accounting and how this fits into what your client would need at some point when you start configuring templates and batches. So as you can see, the source code here uh, is uh, at a template level. What I mean by that is if you actually start, if you create a general template, uh, then you need to select a source code. You can keep it empty or you can assign a source code. Uh, the reason in my last video I had left it empty was not to get into detail about uh, what the source code is meant for. These are predefined, pre-built in um, fields uh, or codes that you could say in Business Central that you can select from and the, you have to select them at a template level not at a batch level. So in this case um, these source codes are actually used for reporting. And I'll show you how uh, you can actually use this for reporting uh, and create a report for that matter. So when you create a general template, uh, you have to, uh, you can select a source code. In this case, it's a fixed asset general ledger journal, and the source code is fixed asset GL journal, which is, uh, as I mentioned, built in. So once you select that, all the uh, transaction that will happen within this template within the batch uh, you can actually access all of that so your client or the user can access every single transaction that goes through within this template it's usually very helpful if you are short on dimensions so if you know if you don't have uh, many dimensions that you can use or the fields that are not available and you've used up all your dimensions and uh, within the general ledger setup then uh, source code is an alternative way of actually going around and uh, pulling out the report that you need that you can construct uh, even using uh, uh, edit in Excel so you can pull out all the report and then go into Excel and start creating your um, pie charts and all the things that you need for your client to actually make sure that their company is sustainable. So that is actually what source codes do. So when you uh, select a source code within a template uh, and as a user you start making transactions, I will show you exactly how you can use the source code. So if we were to go to vendors, and if I can get rid of this fast tab. Actually before we can go to vendors, I would like to go to the chart of accounts. And here we will have ledger entries that we can go to right here ledger entries and over here actually you can use the source code so uh, you could either get rid of this filter and or we can start by filtering through source code 
and as you can see these are all the templates that are available uh, that I can uh, filter out with so I will select one of these templates that actually have transactions or there were uh, transactions that were done within these templates uh, let's see if I can select the one that should have something let's try purchases and see if purchases actually have something that we might have there you go so uh, within using the source code within the purchase template all the transactions that actually went through are listed here and it can go all the way to the very beginning so as you can see there's some transactions from 2017 and um, even 2018 is there so this is how you can actually use source code uh, uh, for reporting purposes of course and uh, you can edit that in Excel move it down there and do all sorts of reporting if you like and that can come in custom reporting as well so that's the idea of source code uh, when it comes back to audit trails which is another set that fits in with source code uh, what you need to do is simply go to change log and I guess not entries at this point but we need to set it up first so change log setup once you click that before you actually activate it you need to define the setup so make sure you don't enable this prior to setting up your table so you need to select the tables that you need to modify uh, need to track your changes so first you need to track your changes within these tables there all these tables are there that you can keep track of and this is where you need to talk to your client and make sure that uh, they understand the idea of tracking every single table in business central it will slow down your system so there has to be certain uh, fields or tables that you need to track and normally a best practice is to track vendors and customers and a few more other things that you would need uh, which would is like client specific of course but vendors and customers and even general ledger lines are usually something that would be uh, advisable so in this case if you can have a look the vendors so the log insertion is basically if somebody were to create a new vendor so they record that a modification would be if any uh, record is modified uh, of a newly or existed vendor and a deletion would be as intuitive as it is that uh, if somebody deletes a vendor so they can log that and it will figure out how you can uh, use that information for your client so uh, once that's set up so let me select something here so it's telling me that some fields need to be added activated so I'll click some fields here just for your reference and you have to select which fields so you can create like name perhaps or even changes in address or a city once you have that selected you have to do the same thing here you can either select all fields or some fields so if I click some fields then it should pick up the one that I did yes it did and log deletion I can do all fields in that matter so once I have that taken care of, then I actually activate it and this pops up. So it's telling you that do you want to uh, activate your log changes? Just say yes. So now every time I try to create or change a vendor, it should do a log entry here. So you can actually go into change log entries and you can monitor what is happening. So as you can see, there are some people that have made changes all the way down so this is all has been activated and recorded so we can continue to go down and then uh, verify what everybody is doing so this is actually how you do audit trails and uh, you've learned what source codes are uh, stay tuned for my next video i will be discussing something more in even interesting